Here's my message for Mark Zuckerberg. Your time of invading our privacy, promoting toxic content, and preying on children and teens is over. Congress will be taking action. You can work with us or not work with us, but we will not allow your company to harm our children and our families and our democracy any longer. All right, Laura, we heard that before. That was a stern warning this time around, though. Can we actually expect to see change from Congress? You know, usually I would be skeptical because we've seen just how ineffective Congress has been in passing legislation that actually makes a difference. But this is different. Uh, this is a problem that has gone global thanks to the bravery of Ms. Haugen in terms of being the whistleblower to bring this information to light to the public. And so because there are children involved, um, one of the most vulnerable members of our population that are being essentially manipulated and used for profit, alleged, again, these are all based on allegations from the whistleblower, um, that definitely has gotten Congress's attention. The fact that they're having this hearing today and the momentum that we've seen um, in the public in terms of, uh, we, I saw ads, to be quite frank, when I was getting dressed this morning, asking for Congress to take action. Uh, and then just the fact that, you know, she had the 60-minute platform last night. So I think Congress is going to be forced to stop turning a blind eye, and they're going to be forced to stop Facebook from operating in the dark and make them accountable for their actions. Yeah, she also... Uh She's the whistleblower that released uh, documents to the Wall Street Journal as well. So on top of the 60 Minutes, I mean, she is getting the word out there, according to her. So what she's alleging, um, strong accusations to say the least, do you actually see Congress moving forward? And isn't the social media uh, giant protected by Section 230 at the end of the day? Yes, yeah, so basically, uh, Section 230 of the Decency and Communications Act, it is designed to make sure that it protects the freedom of expression rights and innovative uh, rights, meaning to be innovative, of technology companies, social media companies. They don't want a situation where uh, companies are afraid that they might be sued based on content that a user puts on their platform, but it wasn't meant to hide the type of behavior or protect the kind of behavior we see here. It's meant to keep them from being sued, again, because of content that a user puts on their site because they want to promote this marketplace of ideas. But this is very different. This is a situation where allegedly you have a company that is using algorithms, very sophisticated technology to track user content. What do you click on? Uh, what demographics tend to click on certain types of subject matters as opposed to others? They're using that information to drive content. They're using that information uh, to ignore the fact that there might be harm to teenage girls in terms of their self-esteem, to ignore the fact that there are extremist groups using this platform to promote hate and also using the platform to promote trafficking, human trafficking. And so that's the issue here. It's, it's very similar to the tobacco industry. You know, they were promoting, uh, they knew that there was harm with tobacco in terms of cancer, uh, but they shielded that from the public. And that's what this whistleblower is trying to do. She's trying to make the public aware that Facebook is choosing to allow harmful algorithms to harm our youth, our teens, for the sake of profit. All right. Well, uh, Laura, speaking of this whistleblower, I mean, she copied thousands of internal documents from Facebook. I mean, can't the social media giant come after her? You know, normally I would say yes, but that's uh, one of the wonderful things about uh, the Dodd Act is the Frank Dodd Act was created, and it's basically a law that promotes whistleblowers protection. So it, it's encouraging whistleblowers to come forth by saying we will protect you from retaliation. There's no legal ramifications or actions that can be filed against her. She's protected under that Dodd-Frank Act. And it's also really interesting, another incentive is if Facebook is fined, which is very likely the SEC will fine them for violating SEC regulations, she will receive potentially 10 to 30 percent of that fine. Now, if you think we're talking millions of dollars here, that's another incentive for people to come forward. And that's why we heard today one of the senators say, I encourage other employees to come forth. You will be protected. And again, there is a financial incentive as well. And how is Facebook responding to all this? Because, I mean, these are shocking and damning allegations against the social media company. Well, you know, we've heard several of their executives speak out publicly. I know uh, this morning I heard one executive say, you know what, we try to do what's in the best interest for individuals. They said that we don't have anything to gain by allowing negative, hateful content on our 
on our website or on our platform because advertisers don't want to be affiliated with negative content. So why would we allow that to go forth intentionally? But uh, we all know that the way advertising works, they care about the numbers, how many people are seeing their product, and that is driven again by these algorithms. All right, Laura, last question for you. Um, and I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Why does the responsibility solely fall on Facebook? You know, because that it's their company, it's their product they're putting forth, and there's a certain moral and ethical responsibility that comes with that type of, you know, you're in business. And so you are responsible, just like with a product liability company, for the products you put out. And if your product is hurting children, you need to be held accountable, and that's what the purpose is of this whistleblower, as they say, blowing the whistle and releasing those thousands of documents to support her claims. All right, Laura McNeil, always a pleasure. Thank you for that legal insight.